Please be advised, this episode gets into touchy-feely subjects about sex and dating with type 1 and may not be suitable for everyone. That said, it's a fun one. Welcome to the Diabetic Podcast. I'm Justin. I have type 1 diabetes, and on this podcast, I talk all things diabetes tech, news, and management with industry leaders, educators, and those thriving with diabetes. Today, I'm joined by type 1 diabetes content creator, Ariana Freyer. You may know her from Instagram or TikTok or some posts that we've put up together. We are talking all about sex and dating with our type 1 diabetes and what that looks like going on first dates getting in bed with people, taking people home, talking about our diabetes technology and talking about a chronic illness. Uh, and we get into a lot of interesting stuff. Ariana is a creator and small business owner who shares her lifestyle with type one online to inspire confidence and empower others with a chronic illness. She's the founder of Cup of OJ Creative and designs cute and colorful products for those living with diabetes. I've linked her online store as well as her YouTube channel and socials in the show notes. Now, I've had so many people ask me if I could cover this topic, and I thought, why not just bring on another T1D creator to talk about our experiences, and I also took a bunch of your questions from online, implemented them into our conversation, so I'm excited to get you some answers. Uh, I hope we did a good job of that. I, we kind of just pulled from our own experiences, so we'll we'll see how this goes. Uh, it's, a, it's an interesting topic to talk about. Uh, new episodes of this podcast release every Monday on YouTube and on all major podcast platforms, so be sure to follow wherever you prefer, and if you're on YouTube, be sure to give it a like and comment with your thoughts. Keep in mind that anything you hear on this podcast or content on any of my pages is not medical advice. Always consult with your physician before making changes to your health care. All right, here it is. Ariana, you are on my podcast. How cool Woo-hoo! is this? Welcome. Finally. It's been a it's been a long time coming. Can you just tell me more about like who you are? What do you do? Uh what are what are you doing in the type 1 diabetes space? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Ariana. Um, I was diagnosed when I was 10, but um, more recently in, I guess I'll, I don't need to go into the whole history, but I am the founder of Cup of OJ Creative, which offers a fresh take on living with type 1 diabetes and um, is a brand that I design cute products for those living with the disease. Um it ranges, you know, from little positive reminders and, and things that just allow us to feel a little more seen and, and connected through this community. Um, I also have a blog, Cup of OJ, where I talk about all of my experiences living with type 1 diabetes and have been posting on Instagram um, about, you know, my lifestyle and what I do. I, I like to hike. I like to bike. I like to get outdoors and, and, um, you know, just not let type 1 diabetes stop me from living my life. Yeah. What was it like growing up with type 1 diabetes? You said you were diagnosed at 10. How comfortable were you with with that? Um, it was really isolating for me. Um, I'm an only child and I didn't know anyone originally who had it. I thought it was a disease for old people. And um, my parents really tried to get me into different groups in town. And I went to camp for a few years and I really liked that. It really helped me find kind of people who were similar to me. Um, So I went through the local camp system and went to teen camp and became a counselor and all of that. And that was so helpful because that was really the only way that I knew other diabetics. Um, But other than that, I mean, it really just kind of became a part of who I am and it's a part of who I am now. And it's taught me a lot over my years. And I just, you know, I'm just thankful that it is a manageable disease and I currently have the resources to, to manage it. And so that's all I can ask for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's interesting because you know you grew up at a time when social media really wasn't as much a thing, and you and you had to go to these outlets physically to meet people and be around people like you. And it, and it's so cool that people growing up today um, have access to social media for community. 
I love that about it. And, and I love that about just the way I found the community and the way you're engaging the community. You know, I have a different experience when it comes to type one, where I was diagnosed just like three years ago. So I didn't grow up with this as a kid. It really much became a thing in my adult life when I already kind of had all of these, like, like I had confidence and all these life skills, I guess, to like make me feel like I could really handle it on my own and and not really care about what other people think as much, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but I grew up, I mean, I'm gay and I, and I grew up in the closet. I didn't feel comfortable coming out until I was 16, which even was like pretty early at that time. And I'm lucky that I had so much support. Um, and it was hard though, for me to like find gay community, uh, at that time when I was that age. And, um, you know, I can only imagine if I grew up today with TikTok, <laughs> you know, oh, I would have been able to feel less alone sooner than like having to wait to watch Will and Grace, which, which was yeah. Yeah, great. Um, what, what tech are you wearing now? Um, I am currently on the Dexcom G6, which is the automated system with my Omnipod 5. And I love that. When did you get on Omnipod? That was somewhat recently, right? Before that, were you just MDI for a while? Yeah, so I have been... I When I was first diagnosed, I was doing the two vials that I like mixed and pH and Novolog and, and all that jazz for a few years wow. um, from like fourth through like freshman or sophomore year of high school. And then I did uh, one year on an animus insulin pump. Um, and I hated it. I hated being in high school, the girl who was wearing a medical device because I felt like so self-conscious and then after a year, I talked to my endo. I'm like, I don't want to pump anymore. I don't want to do this. And he was like, great. Here's an insulin pen. Here are your ratios. Stick with this. And I was like, great. And then I proceeded to do that for the next 15 years. <laughs> and it wasn't until last July that I switched to the pump. My my A1C was still, I was kind of like hanging out around uh, mid to low sixes on MDI. Um. And I just, my husband and I got married a few years ago. So we're in the process of uh, trying to start a family. And so I need to make sure that my A1C is a little lower. And to do that, I was like, I guess I'll try a pump. So I tried Omnipod because I didn't want any of the tubing issues that I ran into in high school. Hated that. Um, and so now I'm on Omnipod, which I end up, I'm actually, I love it. Uh, let's talk about status of relationship. I'll start cause you kind of hinted at yours. I'm single. <laughs> um, <laughs> if anyone's looking to mingle, um, uh, yeah, Woo! no, I'm single. I've I been, love. I've been like mostly single for like the last nine years. I, I haven't had a long-term relationship, uh, for nine years. Um, and more recently I did have like a stint, my longest stint, since that first relationship, I think it was like six or seven months, um, with someone which was, um, my first relationship, like longish relationship with someone while having type one diabetes. So, but what about you? You have a husband. <laughs> I have a husband. Um, yeah, I, uh, I met Adam when I was 23. So we met in 2016. I had just moved back to Las Vegas um, from going to college in San Diego. And we met on Halloween. He, I actually found him on Twitter. My friend retweeted him. And I was kind of like, I had just had this stint of like terrible dates after terrible dates after terrible guys. And I was like sitting on my couch one Sunday and my friend retweeted this guy. And I'm like, and it was like, a, it was a funny funny joke, you know, and, and his profile picture was cute. And I like texted my friend. I'm like, do you know this guy? Or did you just retweet someone random? He's like, no, I knew Adam from high school. Like he's awesome. <laughs> and I was like, okay, like, <laughs> hook it up. And I didn't realize my friend was, um, completely trashed from brunch. And so he texted Adam 
he ended up passing my contact information over to him and he was he was like oh i'm having a halloween party in a few weeks um she should come or maybe it was the next week um, and so I had a group of girlfriends. We were all going to the club because we live in Las Vegas. We were all going to the club on Halloween. And I said, nope, actually we're not. We're going to this house party <laughs> in the suburbs <laughs> instead of the club. And so we changed everyone's plans and we went and Adam, yeah, I prefer it was house so party. fun. <laughs> they were legendary back in the day. <laughs> Let's kind of rewind from where you are now. I mean, I'm sure you still go mm -hmm. on dates but with Adam, but like, <laughs> let's go to meeting new people. Did you ever hide your diabetes it's because you didn't want to get like um, asked about it? Like you're when you were on a, like a date, I guess. I don't think so. I think I don't, I really only remember telling Adam just because it's been so long. Um, but I just always remember being pretty open with it. I've always just been very matter of fact, like, oh, by the way, like I have type 1 diabetes. But I think it was a little extra with Adam. Like it wasn't until we went on our first day, we went to sushi. And I was like, by the way, like we're having carbohydrates. I'm a type 1 diabetic. So I just, excuse me, sorry, real fast. Like just roll it up. My, actually, I think I probably <laughs> injected into my hip. But I'm like, oh, just sorry about this. You know, I just got to... <laughs> Had to take insulin really fast. And he was like, okay. And yeah. that was that. Yeah. You know, I, I got so many questions sent in about like, you know, is there a right time to tell people when you have type one diabetes? Is it the first date, the second date, the third date? How do you tell them? I don't think it needs to be a thing. I'll be on a date. I can't tell you how many dates I'm always rushing to dates. So I, I, I think it's a 50% it's a 50% chance that I'll arrive to that date going low. And so I, I sit down at the, at the table, whatever, but I, I need to look at my phone because my phone has my CGM readings. And if I'm on my phone, like I kind of have to say that I'm looking at my sugar levels. I don't have to, but I kind of do. Or mm -hmm. if we get food or uh, a sugary drink or something, and I want to give myself insulin, like I need to take out the phone. So I'm like, oh, you know, I'm just going to give myself some insulin. I have type one, but there's something I kind of like about talking about it and explaining it. Cause I think, like you said, Adam really didn't know much when he, when he saw it. So kind mm -hmm. of just getting it out of the way of like, this is a CGM, this is a pump and this is what they do kind of yeah. like it finishes it it's not a thing yeah i also think though like i've always put on the i'm such a cool girl like <laughs> i'm just so funny and so cool and like this guy's so lucky to be on a date with me so me being like oh yeah i just have also i'm i'm aging out of this technology story of dating because i wasn't even on dexcom when adam and i were on our first oh, date. Wow. So I wasn't even looking at my phone. I knowing me, the date would come more important to me than like checking my blood sugar manually. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that in front of a random guy. You know, like I'll take insulin, I have to do that, but like I'm not gonna go through all the theatrics. But knowing me, wow. I was probably like, Yeah, I'm a type one and then let that fly mysteriously over their head and I'm like, <laughs> We'll get back to that later. Let's go have a great time. <laughs> That's and then, so funny. Obviously, as the course of our relationship grew, you know, he learned more and yada yada. But in my eyes, I'm like, this is a need to know basis. And that's why I'm injecting insulin at the table. And that's all you need to know right now. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I didn't even realize like how different of an experience we've had because, you know, I've always had the technology of seeing it on my phone for like, for the, all the, I guess, since I've had it for all the dates. Whereas, that's kind of come in later in your relationship. Oh yeah. I wasn't so, even like, I don't even think I cared to look into it because I was so embarrassed, even, even out of college, like so embarrassed by my disease that I didn't want wearing a medical device to deter, you know, someone from liking me, which is so silly because I, literally was like, I'm just going to tell Adam that I have diabetes. Who cares if he doesn't like me? But there was something in my brain. And I don't know if it's being a teenage girl, like in a high school where no one else has 
type one diabetes or none of, you know, your close friends that you see every day have type one diabetes and, and not wanting to be weird and always wanting to like, just act like you have your shit straight and, you know, you're not dealing with all these other things that people don't understand. Well, that totally makes sense. I mean, there's a huge stigma on diabetes and misinformation from media and also just lack of education, you know, that this is just a juvenile does, disease or just a disease for old people from not taking care of yourself. There, there's a whole list of these things. Um, you know, of course, you have this discomfort of of having this disease because it's so misunderstood. Like that, mm -hmm. that kind of makes sense to me. And I think what's so great about people like us on social media and everything else that exists is that I think, I think people who don't have type one and who have type one are becoming so much more educated in what this is, that it's less of a big deal. And hopefully, hopefully the power of this episode is to make people feel more comfortable and not have to feel the way you felt when you were younger, yeah. you know? Well, it's, it's really not until I'm like, talking about it right now that I, I really realized that even out of college, not feeling comfortable enough to look into new technologies and medical devices because of the way that like a pump made me feel in high school. It really wasn't until I knew that I was in this secure relationship that Adam would love me no matter what kind of devices that I wore that and as silly as that may be, that's just how my brain had worked. And then I finally was like, wow, okay, this Dexcom could help lower my A1C and yada, yada. And I, I felt like, obviously it wasn't the only reason, but it felt nice knowing that in my relationship, it wouldn't make me seem like I have this clunky medical device on me and helped my confidence in that way. Whereas, you know, if... If I'm going into the dating world now as a 30 year old, you know, wearing devices probably wouldn't, I wouldn't think twice about it. Yeah. I think it's important for people listening, you know, especially based off of questions I received, your diabetes isn't baggage that someone needs to take on. It's not something to feel mm -mm. uncomfortable about or worried about what someone's going to think. Who cares what someone thinks? If they're, if they're weirded out or don't understand it, they are not for you. In fact, they're probably yes. not a good person yeah. because <laughs> most of the people I meet want to understand, are interested in, in it. And at the end of the day, they're staying and they're sticking around because they like me, who I mm -hmm. am. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, I have low blood sugars that make me a little loopy sometimes or high blood sugars that make me a little moody sometimes. But what I'm trying to say is this isn't a thing. It, your, di your diabetes isn't a thing and you don't need to worry about when you're going to tell someone, how you're going to tell someone or if you're going to tell someone. It's just who you are. <laughs> yeah, and let it happen naturally. Exactly. It kind of reminds me of like, you know, something of this, it's not a story, but it's something I'll do. So, you know, I'm out at the bar, the club, and I meet someone and we start dancing. And then if we're like getting, I don't know, we're like dancing, but like our arms are around each other. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll take their hand and I'll put it on my pump and I'll be like, that's an insulin pump that I'll take their other hand. I'll place it on my CGM be like, that's a continuous glucose monitor. It measures my blood sugar. And they're like, what? And that, and yeah, like, and I'm like, that's a CGM. And then you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, and, and, exa ex well, exactly. And, and there's nothing, you know, we're on the dance floor. We're not going to have a long conversation, but I'm just letting mm -hmm. them know that's what it is. So they don't have to like be worried. And also I'm like, don't worry about hitting it off. Cause I think that that's a big thing for people who don't have type type one or, or diabetes is that they're worried that they may hit something off or hurt you. Hey, listen, my Omnipod gets hit back and forth. It does. It doesn't hurt <laughs> or, or yeah. it, everything's going to be fine. The worst case it falls off, yeah. but it's yeah. kind of built to be bumped, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so uh, funny. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even think about like, once again, wasn't wearing any devices when I met Adam. So he didn't have to be like super careful. Speaking of that with Adam, do you share your numbers with him? Your, your glucose readings? 
Yes, so I do. Um, yeah, I think this is like a perfect time to talk about like how someone can support you in your diabetes because there I feel like are, is definitely a balance and doing too much or too little can be, you know, either a red flag or something that can push your own personal boundaries that, you know, could either lead to a conversation or an ending of relationship. Um, Adam does follow my numbers. Um, my mom does too, but she doesn't ever look at those. People just trust that I know what I'm doing at this point. Adam will only, he only follows my numbers because it will alert him when I'm low for a specific amount of time or high for a specific amount of time. And that's really when he'll ever be like, Hey, by the way, are you low? Are you okay? Do you need anything? He would never like, not to my knowledge, but like, he doesn't go in and be like, Oh, you've been running a little high. Cause I don't need that from him. You know, like I understand that some partners maybe or some people maybe want that but me personally that would feel very invasive like to have your partner feel as if they're kind of a doctor or a parent would rub me the complete wrong way and I'm I'm glad it's it's very at least for me it's very important to have a partner who trusts that I can manage my diabetes to the best of my ability even though some days I'll get low or some days I'll be high or some days I'll have a lot of lows, a lot of lows. He will never be like, well, maybe you should, you know, adjust this or something. Like, unless I am actively complaining about it to him. I don't know. Even when I'm actively complaining about it to him, he'll never be like, well, maybe you should adjust your carb ratio. I'll He's not like, mansplaining. Miss, miss me with that. Yeah. <laughs> Which is good. <laughs> yeah. So like I, I, feel like I've heard of some people dealing with relationships that are very like, well, you're not taking care of yourself and yada, yada. And that's, you know, that's luckily I'm not someone who won't, I will always take care of myself. I will always be in the place where, you know, unless I'm, I'm, I don't know, maybe get to the point where I have children and I'm worried about them. That baby would trump my diabetes in that case, but I'm never not going to like, sit here and not actively take care of myself. So Adam doesn't have to worry about that because he trusts that I am going to manage it. Can you share a time when Adam was just there for you and made you feel less alone? Like, you know, lo some lows can feel really scary, really scary and really isolating. Yeah. The, um, I went like the low, I think I went to down to 27 and I was on the couch and I just like kept testing, kept testing. He was like running back and forth with juice and honey, um, retesting my sugars every few minutes. Sometimes when I'm that low, I'm like, I want to retest every like two minutes just because I'm feeling neurotic. Um, and he was just there as a support. He's like, do you want, do you, should we do the glucagon? And I'm like, no. <laughs> you know, diabetes can sometimes have an emotional side to it. You know, there's been times when I've gotten so low that I'm so afraid of taking insulin uh, for for weeks later. Uh, luckily, it's been two years since that kind of has happened last. Um, have you ever explained that to him, that side of diabetes? When I get, see, for me, it's more if my diabetes burnout is building. Like I will probably, I've had a pretty good go these past few months, but every like once a month, maybe, maybe once every two months, like I'll just start crying randomly about like, I'm tired of this. It'll be like, if I have, I'm, you know, feeling guilty about highs or feeling just so tired of having lows. Um, mine will, mine will, I, I haven't felt, I haven't felt the emotional low. Mine will only come from like a series of things happening where I'm like, I'm so over this disease. I don't want to be posting on Instagram about this stupid disease. I don't want to talk to anyone about this disease. Like, and I'm a pretty vocal person. People, I wear my heart on my sleeve. People know if I'm in a good mood or a bad mood. And so generally he will like, 
understand. I'll be like, I'm so tired of being low and I'm yada yada and I'll start crying. And he's so good about just holding me because realistically, like, I don't know, what's he going to say? Sorry that happened. You know, like he knows to just hold me and I'll get past it. It's, and it's right. It's less about what people say. It's, it's, it's actions over words, right? Yeah. Anyone can say, I'm so sorry for you. What can I do? But it's what they do that defines your relationship. So Adam running back and forth frantically, like I can see that in my head of him doing that, being like, do you need honey? Do you need the glucose? You know, or, or my friends who, I mean, I had a really serious low. I was kind of alluring to this earlier in Fire Island a couple of years ago. And mm-hmm. when that happened, not only did I kind of pass out on the floor, a friend fa- like got to me, um, but I had two friends FaceTime me. They, they follow my blood sugar levels and mm-hmm. I was able to answer one of them. And they were just there with me on the phone on Whoa. FaceTime. And it, you know, a low can feel so a lonely, like it really, it really yeah. is just, you're, you're all alone in this weird tunnel that's closing and just mm-hmm. having one of your best friends or Adam there by your side, whether it's in person or virtually is just incredible. And, you know, I, I encourage people to share their sugar levels with people that they want to be there in those moments. Yeah. Today's episode is sponsored by T1D Exchange. You can directly make an impact on diabetes healthcare, treatments, and technology by participating in the T1D Exchange registry. It starts with a simple survey about your life with T1D, and it only takes about 15 minutes. After that, you'll have a personal portal with ongoing T1D study and survey opportunities from research on technology, daily T1D management, and more. Plus, some of these studies even offer for compensation. Signing up with the link in the show notes helps support my channel and it allows me to continue putting out free content. You can sign up at t1dexchange.org slash diabetic or click that link in today's show notes. Now for the episode. All right. All right. Let's get into sex. <laughs> um, okay. You good? You good with that? You ready? Yeah, mm-hmm. you, you feel ready for I that? Will okay, say, cool. I never talk about any of this stuff on Instagram because I have too much family on there. So if my in-laws or if my family are listening, (laughs) you don't have to. Let's start with like, before you do it. Um, Like, do you prepare in any way for sex? Like, if you know you're going to like... Yeah, I'd like my blood sugar to be like a little higher. And we all all try to plan it, okay? (laughs) But like, if I'm like, okay, possible. The vibes are there. Possibly it's going to happen later. Or like, <laughs> this would be the perfect time to do this thing. Then yeah, maybe I'll have like a juice box before or a snack before and not take it, <laughs> insulin for it. So I get it go a little higher. But then it's always awkward. Like, what if it doesn't then happen? Because I, I don't know. I'm all about trying to still make keep the magic, you know? I'll, if if I have to, even even these days, if I have to have the burden of dealing with my diabetes quietly. I'm not going to be like, okay, honey, I'm, I'm having this juice box. We're going to, let's get ready in like a half hour. I'll be ready for you. <laughs> like That's just so unsexy to me. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny. Like I do mentally prepare for sex and have an idea for when it could be happening, especially, you know, when I'm seeing someone long-term rather than like, uh, a date uh, after a few dates with someone or something. Um, But I tend to not do anything blood sugar wise um, to prepare. I don't use like an exercise mode or, um, or drink any juice. Mm -hmm. I'll also put it on activity mode. Okay. Yeah. I know a lot of people will do that Mm -hmm, because I'll drop. I may have done that in the past when I'm specifically drinking because I know I will drop after having alcohol in general. So I'll do that. But typically I don't find that I have like a major drop, um, during sex, but, um, it happens. I definitely do go low. Um, but I have under my bed, you know, if we're at my place, I have like applesauces and apple juices. I'll be like, oh, I'm just going to have a cute little applesauce. Like, don't mind yeah. me. <laughs> you know? 
<laughs> See, I like I become selfish in those moments of like I'm not gonna let my diabetes ruin my fun here. Because if I end up going low in the middle of it, like it will ruin everything. At least my experience. It'll ruin my experience. It'll probably ruin my partner's you know, Adam's experience too, because he can tell that I'm less into it if like you know, my eyes are glazing over. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, if I run a little high during it, I can correct afterwards and still have fun. Do you have any like funny stories? <laughs> I have ripped off. I think a Dexcom. That's why you don't do stomach sites, my friends. Yeah. I definitely have spots that I don't like, uh, that I love, but I don't like in those moments. Specifically, one mm-hmm. of my favorite spots is like, mid mid abdomen near the like just under the rib cage mm-hmm. like to a point where it's fine if you're sleeping on your i don't sleep on my stomach but if you slept on your stomach it'd be fine but if you're like being pushed in a certain direction on your stomach mm-hmm. it's not it jams yeah, or into your if someone else's cage. stomach is on yours doesn't yeah work. exactly or if you like me back in the day in high school when you're just learning how to get down and dirty and they're like belt buckle or something hits it. <laughs> oh my God. I could see how that's a bit traumatizing as a child. Yeah. Um, Cause then I gotta go, gotta go home to change my pump. Can your mom drive me home? Or like, can you drive me home? Ooh. You know, I've never thought about that. Luckily for me, there has been um, a time before where my pump came off during, um, sexual intercourse and I, but I was home, so it was mm-hmm. fine, but yeah, I like to be spontaneous. If I, if I wind up going home with someone and I'm, I'm not carrying an extra pump on me usually, you know, after going to the bars. So I couldn't imagine that would really stink. <laughs> so I always got to bring a backup, backup pen. I don't bring like backup stuff on me if I'm going out for the night, usually, well, yeah, you also, you don't carry a purse with you probably too. Exactly. Yeah. Like what would you in the past before Adam, do you remember a time when you'd be packing your bag for a night out? Like, would you bring, I mean, backups for everything? Before Adam, all I, I probably, I would have a tiny purse and in that tiny purse, I would just throw in my meter, my, my Lancet, my test strips couple, two or three insulin pen needles, my insulin pen, couple fruit snacks, my phone, my wallet, my chapstick, and then I, my, my dorm key, you know, wrapped around my (laughs) thing. Oh yeah, that's true. You weren't on like a pump back then. So do you miss MDI at all? Are there parts about it? Um, there's parts about it, like thinking about where to put my, like, I don't like changing my pump. I don't mind it, but like, I just don't love having to think about, like, luckily I don't have a lot of things coming up. Like we already did honeymoon and all that jazz. So I don't have to be like, okay, we're traveling. So like, I don't, I don't love how much I have to bring traveling Or, like, how far ahead I have to think about where I want to place this and things like that. Um, So I like the beauty of MDI in the sense of, like, okay, here's when I go out. All I have to take is, you know, X, Y, and Z. But I do love not having to bring, take out an insulin pen in public. I love not having to um, think about carb counting because it does it all for me. Um, and I love seeing how much insulin I have on board. I didn't like having to just yeah. this back in the day. This just tells me everything I need to know, which is nice. Have you ever had it, had like a really bad low during sex? Like one that just stopped the whole party? Yeah. Like how do you approach yeah. that situation? I mean, all of my memories of like literally everything and diabetes wise are only with, I've been with him for like that's almost fine. 10 years at this yeah, point. Yeah, that's fine. Sorry, I'm I'm actually going down right now. I need to have a no, juice. <laughs> it's fine. And you don't have a sign like me behind us. So, uh, no, I'll, I'll take this on for a second while you drink your juice. Um, you know, and that's exactly right. You found a partner that 
really no matter what happens even even if it's during that activity it's like he's gonna be understandable of that and um I've definitely had lows before, um, even around new people and sexual and having sexual activity, but it really goes back to what we were saying earlier, which is if they don't understand, then F them, right? Like these, yeah. and, and I find that, and I find that the older I get, and I've had lots of years dating and getting to know people, um, the the older I get, the more and more I understand the type of person I'm looking for and who is the right person for me. So I find that more and more nowadays, the person that I do take home or that I get to this point with, that they are going to be okay in that situation, even if it's the first time we're doing this and I happen to go low. Like I, I actually, the, the oh, person yeah. I was dating last, I was with him for like seven months, um, we met in Vegas actually. And, um, we went back to like my hotel room. Um, you know, we met over a weekend. So like mm -hmm. I, by, well, by the end of the weekend, he came back to my hotel room. We were getting jiggy with it. And mm -hmm. I remember like the moment that I was going low, we actually did have to stop everything. And, I was like, I told him, I was like, I'm going low and I'm starving. Do you want to go get food? Like, that's what I said in the middle of like about to be doing things. Mm -hmm. And he was all for it. He wanted to spend more time with me. And, and this meant spending more time with me and having a new experience together. So mm -hmm. we got dressed. We went down to the food court in the hotel um, and then we went back up to the room after <laughs> Like, it was just like, it was just a fun adventure to do together. But he was so understanding um, in that moment, um, which was so wonderful. And I was feeling really shaky. I remember feeling very shaky. So um, yeah. I think it's really don't get stuck in your. Yeah, it was great. I mean, like, don't get stuck in your head about lows. Um, well, yeah, even Adam, like, if even the first time that we ever got down dirty. Um, I could have stopped it at any time and he would have been respectful and nice. That's just who he is. But I do, I do remember something. Um, it was like one of the first, it must've been within the first month of us dating. I was spending the night at Adam's house and I didn't have a Dexcom on. So like, imagine you learning all about diabetes and then you're like, Oh, okay. So you just check it. Like what happens in the middle of the night? Are you going to be okay? What if you just die? And so there was one night where I, we were heavily, probably heavily drinking. Um, and I woke up and all of like the bed had blood all over it. And I, my fingers had like dried blood all over them. Adam had, I must've said, you know, oh, I need a test in the middle of the night or something. He had tried it tested my blood sugar that night and just didn't understand like which you know how to do it he made a full mess but he tested me in the middle of the night to make sure i was okay <laughs> oh my god that's gross and adorable <laughs> i know it was so gross and adorable <laughs> i got a question about performance anxiety and the fear of not being able to perform with like high blood sugar um mm. I don't think I've personally had issues performing at high blood sugar. I could understand you being in like a mindset or a moodiness that just makes you not interested or feeling kind of not feeling sexy. I mean, I've definitely had that and, and that's, that's, it's a thing. Um, I don't think it happens that often for me, but I've had to think about like, mine doesn't happen when I'm high. Mine is definitely like if I'm going low and I can feel myself going low, but I don't want to stop yet and test or look at my phone at all. Cause it'll take us out of the moment and having to realize that like, this is just not going to happen. Like me continuing, I need to either stop and test and know for sure that I'm going low Otherwise, like, this is just, it's going to go nowhere. 
Yeah. I mean, you definitely, it's easy to get in your head a little bit and get into mm-hmm. a little spiral of like, am I low? Should I test? No, I shouldn't. I'm having fun, but maybe I should. I don't want to pass out. But if I do, mm-hmm. is it going to end? And you're kind of having this whole inner dialogue in your head. And I have this in other situations of my life too. And that's why I find that communication tends to really make things better Yeah, because I'm able to tell the person totally. exactly what I'm thinking. And um, I think that that's really the key is to communicate um, whenever possible, whatever, whatever way it is, you can give as little or as much information as you want, but just to kind of let people know, um, where you're at. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Communicating with about type one diabetes, anytime you're about to do it or it's involved is like so helpful, even if it becomes a little less sexy. Yeah. Well, and I also think that even if that moment when you're talking about it becomes less sexy, the future potential well you'll actually yeah. be preventing it from you'll 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 keep it sexy by being like oh it's just whatever instead of making it this big thing it's like oh it's just a low oh it's just a high whatever yeah. it is like it's no Maybe big like deal <laughs> exactly exactly it's like oh like i can i can keep it going on i can make drinking a juice box sexy i can make anything looks look look at you right now drinking a juice box you don't you look great <laughs> and that kind of honestly that kind of uh, brings me to like this last little section I wanted to talk about, which is just like the fact that diabetes is sexy or can be sexy, or I like to think of it as something that, um, is not, not sexy. I like to take my shirt off. I like to show off my pump. Um, Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people don't feel comfortable showing off their diabetes technology. Do you remember a time when you embraced diabetes, whether it's your, your injectable, your pump and where you made it less of a weakness, but more of a strength. Yeah. I think starting to, I think just starting to post on Instagram and talk about it more. And like my, my, I took my personal Instagram account and, you know, basically create what I post now. It's just, it's still my personal Instagram account. It's just like, tailored way more to the ins and outs of type one diabetes, which is just what I live every day. Um, but I, I definitely feel like I feel like when I feel sexy and I feel like I'm, you know, feeling confident and looking my best, my robot parts are just a part of me and I'm not necessarily like feeling like them standalone is sexy, but like, having them be a part of my confidence and my confident personality allows them to, you know, people to maybe see them and not think what I was so afraid of when I was younger of like, Oh my God, what's that? It's more like, Oh, whatever. Like that person's wearing something. I don't know what it is, but she looks good doing it. (laughs) The way you view yourself is the way other people will view you. Mm-hmm. And the more confidence you have or portray to have, the more people will respect you and find you sexy. So if you wear that pump or that CGM or use that insulin pen with confidence and excitement and sexiness, whatever it is, if you if you just wear it with pride, other people will that will resonate with other people. You know, it can feel scary to show off devices and it, especially as like the summer comes around and all of our devices are going to be on display like a lot more, but these things keep you alive and they keep you healthy and they allow you to manage your chronic illness to the best of your ability. And they should be shown off, you know, who cares what someone, what someone says. It took me a lot of years to realize that. And I don't think that my teenage self could, could have said this, but you know, the, your devices just make you more you and who you are is amazing and special and beautiful. And who gives a fuck what other people think? <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't matter. It, it matters what you think. And I think that the best you can do is, is like I said, wear this stuff with pride and use this technology. Don't be afraid to use it because you're worried about what other people think, right? Learn from our mistakes. Yeah. And also your friends are like the people who actually matter in your life. The people who you love and love you, like they don't care if you're wearing a medical device. 
and they know that it's going to just make your you healthier and allow you to manage your diabetes way easier and better. And it goes for all medical devices, not necessarily even just, you know, diabetes medical devices. It's just like this, this little piece of technology makes you more you and the people who matter to you know that that as well. And you don't need to prove anything else to anyone else. Absolutely. Ariana, thank you so much for coming on. This was such a fun conversation to have a little cringy <laughs> points to <laughs> have to talk about, but I'm glad we did. And, and I hope it resonates with others. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I love being on here and I hope to be back soon. Yeah. Oh, where can people find you? Oh, okay. Please follow me on Instagram. <laughs> um, at Ariana Frere, Ariana like grande and then F R A Y E R. Um, uh, please check out my shop and shop all the fun little goodies. It is shop cup of OJ.com. And then please subscribe to me on YouTube. It's also at Ariana Frere. I'm at Ariana Frere basically everywhere. And then cup of OJ creative for, um, to follow my small business on all platforms as well. Great. You heard it. Links are in the description. Thanks for listening to today's podcast. If you want to check out Ariana's pages, I put those in the show notes. New episodes of this podcast release every Monday, wherever you listen and on YouTube. I've got links to my YouTube channel and social accounts in today's show notes, as well as a link to my Patreon. If you're looking for even more diabetic content, whether that's exclusive videos, Q and A's or interviews, they are all over on Patreon. You can sign up for just the price of a latte with that link in the show notes. I'm Justin and I'll take you next week.